I've been waiting to tell you something. It started with the fisherman. He taught them a new way of life. He turned everything upside down to make it right side up. Forgive seven times? Try 70 times seven, he said. Just be nice? No. Give it all over, whatever is asked of you. Reach over the tracks. Yeah, go to that part of town. <laughs> Cling to the eternal and shake off the chains of this earth. Sin messed everything up, the whole world, but he made it right. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy and honored is your name. Your kingdom, it's come. I'm pledging my life to bring it closer and closer, to show the power of your divine love, to declare deliverance from death and sin. To all people, to each race in every language. Making disciples of all nations, I'll own my responsibility. Go all in and make it real in my corner of the world. The authority Jesus has already been given. The kingdom that will come on earth as it is in heaven. An everlasting dominion that will never pass. Because he beat death. Coming as the king of the Jews and finishing it all as the king of the world. His throne and authority are sovereign. Well, you heard right. Forgiveness without boundaries. Hope in all circumstances and a peace that passes understanding. Because death is conquered, eternal life is established. That's why we keep going. Why I keep telling. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The root. The offspring. The bright morning star. Baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From street to street. Nation to nation. He is the King. Power and glory belong to Him. His kingdom will have no end. There's room for you and room for me. Room for everyone who calls on the name of the King. And his name is Jesus, the name above all names. The first and last. The one and only. And he loves you. And he loves you. He loves you. And he loves you. And that is what I've been wanting to tell you. Good morning, church. Good morning. And that's what we've been wanting to tell you as yes. well. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah. We've got a live audience here in the building. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting. Second week in a row, we are back-ish. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's so exciting here celebrating Easter as a family. Mm. You've got something to share. Yes. Um, so this is from Matthew 28, verses 5 to 6, saying, Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, Amen. see where his body was lying. He is risen. Jesus is alive. Happy Easter, guys. Can we just take a few moments to like, you know, praise break? I know we're not allowed to probably shower, what, but we can always clap and stomp yeah, our well, feet. Okay. Yeah. Jesus is alive. <laughs> we have to make it work now. You know, we're not allowed drums yet, but we can be the drums. Yes. And we, can, we can celebrate. Mm -hmm. We're about to go into a moment now. Uh, of worship, is that right? We're about to mm -hmm. head into worship and I want to invite you to just dive in uh, with us as we uh, worship our King who yes. is alive Amen. right now. Yes.
a very happy Easter. Yes, it's a wonderful day. Wonderful it, to sing the praises of God on Resurrection Sunday. Absolutely really amazing. Is. Yeah. And it is, in terms of the Christian calendar, it's the most important day yes, of the year, it isn't is. it? Yeah. You know, uh, Christmas is good because that was Jesus coming to earth. Uh, that was God becoming one of us. But Easter is the victory. Amen. It's the, <laughs> as Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. Yes. And uh, the glorious resurrection was the finish of the finish yes. when it was all completely done. And so because of what Jesus has done, then we can stand confident and secure and knowing that as we come to him, then he forgives all of our sins. That's right. He gives us a fresh new start. What a powerful message yeah, for it eternity. It is a powerful message. Yeah, Good to is. welcome you if you're watching online. Clive and Mavis, Renalyn, Zen, all, anybody else, it's really good. I know some who usually watch online are here in the uh, church building this morning, so it's really good having yes. you with us. It's Hello really good to see you. Hello, everybody in the building. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite strange um, having worship, you know, in, in the building and everybody being very muted about their <laughs> wanting to shout hallelujah and things, and it's... it's uh, hard isn't it because yeah. <laughs> you want to dance and sing and yes. do everything but uh, my heart's dancing this morning it really is <laughs> yes and yes. um and i'm also thrilled that uh, you know in terms of the pandemic then in the uk at least then we seem to be on top of it and yeah. things are all heading the right direction and yeah. in dumfries and galloway then you know, very few yes. infections. So we praise the Lord Amen. for that. Yes. And yes. Uh, we're, you know, incredibly grateful to all of the care services who have That's worked right. tirelessly through the last year and mm. cared for people even on their, you know, deathbed in their dying moments. And, and it's been an incredibly moving year, I think. So sad, so frustrating, mm. but it's really been quite moving as well. I think it's caused everyone's priorities to change and to realize how precious life is, mm. that it's not just about having a good time, it's actually, you know, the preciousness of life and community, yes. one another. Yes. So, but I, I for one, will be so pleased when we can get back to normal mm -hmm. and uh, we can hug people and That's shake right. hands. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a novel experience, won't it, when we can start shaking hands with people. <laughs> it really will. Yeah. So, uh, we've had um, a few people commenting in. And yes, just I mentioned, mentioned that, uh, them yes, before. I should be That's listening really to my wife knowing what she's doing. <laughs> 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 but we're going to head over, to, hand over to uh, Duke Morak to lead us in communion. So grab your bread and wine or equivalent and uh, get ready for sharing communion together. And in the church here, we've got little trays under your seats, so you can take those. They've all been sanitized and stuff, ready for action. Hey church, it's great to be worshipping with you on Easter and uh, since lockdown started we have been doing communion, the first lockdown last year we've been doing communion every week whereas it, traditionally we always did it once a month and I really feel this is a special time because um, although the communion, the Lord's Supper was initiated before uh, Christ's, Christ's death and burial and resurrection, um, but now we're really celebrating um, what Christ has done for us and giving hope for the future. I want to share a quick verse with you before we take communion. And it comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. It says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. But he was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. And that's the exciting thing for us as Christians, that not only um, does Christ's resurrection and the empty tomb signify eternal life for us, but it also signifies uh, being born again and having me made new in the spirit. And that's, uh, that's something that's available to all of us who are Christians. And if you don't know Jesus, then today's a great day to think about what Jesus has done for you. He said he died and suffered for our sins. All the things that we've done wrong, all the things that we, all the mistakes that we've made, he paid the price for us. Mm -hmm. But better than that, he rose again mm -hmm. after that death and it lives forevermore, setting a precedent for us as Christians. So I want you to, you know, the point of Lord's Supper is to remember his death, 
his body that was broken, when we take the bread and his blood that was spilled, when we drink the wine, but also to remember that it didn't end there. Amen. And, and that Christ is living forevermore, uh, setting that, set, making the way for us to do the same. So let's just take a moment. There'll be something that comes up on the screen. There'll be some music and a, a little uh, a picture on there while you take your communion. So God bless you guys. for sharing that and it's just wonderful having real people here there's kids here from kids church and they've got whole bodies and it's wonderful um, and we're just here to pray together I know as Pastor Mark and Helen said it is frustrating because during worship there you're you know your bodies are bursting but you know people here and people at home don't let that hinder you you know we can be home in about 40 minutes and then do it there you know don't stop praising God just to make it that we can't do it in our building we can do it at home in the car and um, outside and everything which is brilliant so we've got a few prayer requests this morning that we're going to crack on with and Smyrna is in the church this morning which is wonderful and we're praying for her best friend we're praying for her best friend Anne She's in Bermuda right now, but she really needs a visa as she's starting a new job in Glasgow. I think she's a doctor, am I right, Smyrna? Um, and she really needs the visa. So do the Chaya family. Visas um, are, Lord, the God is able to do that. So let's just pray for paperwork for the government to get things um, in order um, and I know it's been there's grace for time um, but jobs are happening too and we're just going to really believe for that and um, we're also praying for Danielle and the new life that's grown inside her just now and we're going to just speak such healing over them and such peace and such joy in this pregnancy that it'll go well and that Lord will just keep both of them so safe in this time. Um, and we're also remembering our precious Jean who's um, today and this week as she just remembers the loss of her dear husband and I'm just so thankful that she's in the building today just surrounded by people but let's just think of Jean this week. It's been a while but it, it's it, it, he was brilliant um, and your memories can be hard and if you're facing memories just now of loved ones and things just let God's embrace hold you so tight um, and just you know we sat, we're going to sing at the end and we know that this is Easter and we um, Jesus did step out the grave which is amazing but sometimes we can have graves in our own lives um, and um, transition is really hard and yesterday was a transition day for Jesus because he was in the tomb on Friday into Saturday and risen today and it's a little bit like that coming out of lockdown I don't know about you but I'm not easy with transitions even transitions between seasons we get all comfy at Christmas and then is it spring yet is was it sunny yesterday or was it cold who knew it was like we're in between and it's a bit like that in our lives and especially like that just now coming out of lockdown for many many people and I was just chatting with Pastor Helen this morning and interestingly it's for all ages young folks older folks middle folks it's tricky um, and so let's just pray this morning for an ease in the transition things are changing things are changing in church and it's not the same but it isn't the same as it was two weeks ago because you're, there's people here so but tra transition takes time um, and that can be challenging so let's really pray for that and the biggest thing I've been believing all week for this and it's been strong in my heart is the last thing Jesus said before he he died was forgive them for, a, for they know not what they're doing. And 
I cannot tell you the power of forgiveness. Um, I'm not going into it in detail, but there was a time in my life that I had a situation at work and one day I had to choose to forgive. And I cannot tell you, it just stepped me into freedom. Um, and I just really sense there's such power for you in the building today and for you listening in your homes of forgiveness. To forgive, to forgive. It's so powerful, even when every part of your body wants not to and you just want to comment or you want to just get that own back we've got to forgive we've got to forgive and even the word itself just the weights fall um, and if you're listening today and you think I can't I can't due to it being too big then we want to help you with that if it's too big and you're carrying things please call the church contact somebody and we'll work through that with you. But the power of forgiveness, strong enough to be the last words that our Jesus spoke on the cross. Let's be a church. Let's be a people. Let's be wives, friends, husbands, children who forgive. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for Smyrna. I thank you for this precious friend. And Lord, I thank you that you are God of paperwork. You are God of practicalities. You are God of miracles, as Pastor Mark was speaking last week. And we ask for visas to be set free in Jesus' name. That uh, The chires that's been locked up for years, we pray a freedom to those visas. And for this precious Anna, Father, we pray that Anne's visa will be through and she can begin her life here in Scotland. Father, we know there's grace for a pandemic and a season, but Lord, we just know this is coming out of this season. And Lord, you're a miracle working God out with seasons. So Father, we ask for your hand to be on that in Jesus' name. Father, we ask for your precious hand to be over in Danielle and that precious life forming inside her. Father, we ask that you will lead their way, you will shine their way, you will be be close to both in these days in Jesus name and as a church we love and surround them and carry them through um, and we can help care for them too in Jesus name and father we just ask for your extra arms strongly to be around uh, our precious Jean this morning father we thank you for Jim we I just hear him joking and see him teasing behind the sound desk um, in years gone past. And Lord, I thank you that he is free from pain, free from sickness and rejoicing with us this morning and precious Jean. Father, I thank you for how you've equipped Jean and your oh, precious children that are a credit to her and to Jim. And Father, I thank you that she stands in your love, secure and solid and heal her precious heart and keep it whole today as she remembers her precious Jim, Jim in Jesus name and father we thank you that this is a season of transition we praise you that father for the changes we bless you for the changes today that there's people here and that father you're able and still watching at home and father we just believe for the day where we'll be in a big church because we need it big to hold everybody and you listening you come along when it's time and that father we know transitions are hard but we thank you for your ease we thank you for your grace we thank you for your strength to see us through in Jesus name and Lord we ask for your forgiveness we ask for you that we rejoice this morning we're lifting our arms to praise because you forgave us but Lord fill us to enable it to outflow to others. Father, let us be a people who forgive quickly, who forgive really, and Father, who will move on with things. And Lord, I ask if there's anybody in the building, anybody at home, or anybody that's just happened upon this feed this morning, who is longing to forgive someone, then Father, and they're struggling, I ask in Jesus' name that they would get in touch and we could do it together. Lord, let these weights fall from our lives. Let us the, the churning inside, the broken hearts, the heaviness we feel, let it fall from people and let us walk out of that grave. Father, it's the last thing you said when you died and we wanna pray that it will be the last thing every night that we pray out of our lips to follow in your example. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for miracles and we cannot wait to hear about them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
thank you, church. And now you are in for the biggest treat of your lives because it's kids' church. And yes, it's my favourite part and I can be so biased. But our kids have been praising this week. They've been worshipping this week. And it's a happy day. Take it away, kids. I wish you guys could have seen everybody here in the congregation. I think they enjoyed that worship more than what Davy and Joanna and Morgan and I did earlier. <laughs> it was great. It was great. And it is a happy day. It's a day that we celebrate Jesus and, is, and being alive and, and all of that. And we're coming to a part in the service that we, it's our tradition here to, uh, to, to talk about giving. And it's not to try and twist your arm or to make you feel bad or, you know, anything like that of the sort at all. We just believe in charitable giving. We believe in being generous and instructing us to be generous and not just so you can give money to the church, but so that you can look after your friends, your neighbors, your enemies. Being kind and generous and speaks volumes to um, non-believers when we're generous to one another. I can, I can think of several examples where I've been blessed by people in the church with mountain bikes, with cars, with, with um, um, kitchens, sorry, food. food. Um, when I tell non-Christian friends about it, they're like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Like someone actually gave you a car? 
you know, and, and like, you know, and that happened just in the, in the last week. Someone's let me borrow the car and I, I, don't, I didn't actually meet them except for once on Zoom. And that's the nature of Christianity. That's the nature of um, believers. And, 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 and that's where we should be at. And, you know, I, like I said, I don't want you to feel obligated to give today, but we want to encourage you, um, if you if you want to. But I'm going to share, share, share a verse for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 says, Each of you should give what you've decided in your own heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We need to get to that point, church, where we don't give our offerings as a, mo- a matter of obligation, but as a matter of cheerfulness, a matter of joy, a matter of freedom. Say, I just want to bless the church, or I just want to bless my neighbor. I just want to see God's name, you know, set in lights as I do these things. And, uh, you know, and that's certainly what happens. Any money that's coming into here, we use it for doing all the stuff that we're doing this morning, uh, opening up our doors again and uh, meeting the needs of people. And that's what, we, that's what we're here for. That's what the money's for. And, um, you know, so I want to encourage you this morning as we give. Now, if you're online, then we're gonna, we've got something coming up on the screen for you to give. And we encourage the congregation, if you want to give, just to give the same way. It helps us with not passing money around and people having to count money and touching of hands and all of that kind of stuff. So if, even though you're here, church, uh, if you could still give with one of these methods that you see on the screen, either the QR code or PayPal or straight into the bank account, that would be really great. But I just want to pray for you as we give and pray a blessing over your finances. So Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you set a, a precedent of giving, that you gave your life. And who could give more than that? Lord Jesus, and we thank you for that. And so, Lord, teach us to be generous people. Teach us to be cheerful givers, not only to our churches, but to our family and to our friends, to our brothers and sisters, and to be people that are ready to give without thinking twice. Lord God, that you would make us kind and generous people. And Lord, Father, I pray that you would honor the gifts, Lord God. Everyone who's giving today, Lord Father, just bless them, Lord God. Cause them to receive more back, Lord God, that they can then bless other people again. That people who are faithful in giving, Lord God, that you would just see them as people that you can pour your blessing out because you know that they're going to be faithful to share it with others. So, Lord God, we just give you all of this. We ask that whatever monies come in, Lord Father, that you use it for your kingdom, for your glory, and to see it established in this this area, this region especially. Lord God, as you've planted us all here in this this region, but for everyone who's watching further afield, Lord God, that be a blessing in their community as well. So, God, we just give you this money and say, let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Great. Okay, so I think now we're going to hand over to Lydia, who's going to share what's going on this week in church. Hello, we are just delighted to have you with us today. I have just a few announcements about what we have coming up this week with River of Life Church. First of all, we as a church pray together every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. on WhatsApp. On Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., anyone is welcome to join us as we study through the Bible together. Church, I'm here to talk to you about together. Now, it is so important to come together to study the Word of God because some of you may learn something and teach you something, or you may learn something and you want to pass it on to somebody else, and then together we build the body of Christ. Join us and let's share the Word of God together. Amen. The Kids Church Zoom is every Friday evening at 6 p.m. So if you'd like to get linked in with that, reach out to our children's pastor, Morag. The youth meets on Zoom every Friday at 7 p.m. So for more information, reach out to our youth pastor, Davi. The pantry at River of Life Church offers free surplus food to our community every evening from half six to half seven at River of Life Church by the train station. That is all the announcements that I have for today. I hope that you enjoy the rest of today's live stream.
This year more than ever, we need a renewed hope. And with this in mind, members of parliament and peers from across the political spectrum have come together to share the Easter story. We hope you enjoy it. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found a stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed. They saw the Lord. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these, these are written, written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son, the Son of God, God, and that by believing you may have life, life his in his name. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. This year more than ever, we need a renewed hope. And with this in mind, members of Parliament and peers from across the political Slight glitch there, but there we go. It's good to see you all here and good to be with you here on the screen as well. Happy Easter to everybody. It's such a, such a good day. You know, when, when I realised that I was to speak today and bring the message, I... Um, I it's so hard to pick which particular bit of the Easter message to bring because it's, there's so much you can get out of it, so much we can learn, so much we can rejoice in. Um, everything from the, the victory of Jesus, the defeat over Satan, the fact that he did that for us, that he loves us, uh, and the resurrection, we can take it as how he validated women who were ridiculed and, and looked down upon in those days, how he, he validated the doubters and said, just believe, just trust me, everything we can look at. But I want to bring something else today. I just want to bring the gospel to you this morning. 
So I'm going to read some of what the uh, politicians and members of parliament uh, read, but I'm just going to take it. I'm reading it from Luke chapter 24 and starting at verse 1. Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground and the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he'd said this, so they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men. Oh, there's another sermon there, isn't there? Sorry. So they didn't believe. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. And then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucified him. We'd hoped he was the Messiah who'd come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. And then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning. And they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing. And they'd seen angels who told them that Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see. And sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women said. And Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and at the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, stay the night with us since it's getting late. And so he went home with them. And as they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem, where they found the 11 disciples and the others who'd gathered with them, who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. <sighs> I love that account. I love that, isn't it? And, you know, God is able to come to us just like he did to those men on the road to Emmaus. He's able to just suddenly open men's eyes and women's eyes, mankind's eyes. And they can recognize them. And we can be like that as well this morning. It's such a day for rejoicing that our Savior is alive. Amen. Many of the things in our faith can, can become quite over familiar if we let them. Even this amazing truth of Jesus dying to take our place and make, make a way back to God for us. 
to forgive us, forgive us our sins, give us a future and a hope. And then rising from the dead to show the power of God and for him to walk with us every day. So I want to really look at this this morning and see what he did, what it means. <laughs> you may remember that we've been in a series recently of taking all the familiar slogans from this COVID time. And today has one of the best. It's really and truly a day we can talk about Jesus came to save lives. Amen. <laughs> Luke 19 verse 10 says this, for the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. And 1 Timothy 1 15 says, this is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You see, right in the beginning, when Mankind fell for the deceit and the lies of the enemy, Satan. It infected the whole human race. But even then, God in his mercy made a way for man to know how to have relationship with him. Again, he gave laws, ten commandments, and he made a way where sin could be covered over through sacrifices and keeping the law. Not, not because he's mean and he likes shed blood, but because he wanted us to really grasp the hugeness of what sin had done in separating us from his father. He wanted us to know the consequences of sin and also to see how impossible it was to keep the law. I remember when uh, we had the Christian school here and when we first started it, there were some very basic uh, rules we had, things like no talking in this and uh, uh, asking permission to do stuff, you know. But we had very, very few rules. But then people started doing things wrong. They started teasing each other or I can't remember what they did. And we had to make a rule to stop them doing that. And the more people came and the more time went on, the more rules there were because you couldn't have that happening because it was bothering somebody else or, and it just went on. And it pointed out an, an awful lot that there's an awful lot of wrong and sin there. Throughout the scriptures, we can see that man obeyed sometimes and then rebelled at other times. But, you know, God had that ultimate plan of salvation that all the sacrifices and offerings and the law keeping was pointing to. The, it was pointing to the fact and the truth of when Jesus came, he was the unblemished lamb. And he basically became that sacrifice, that ultimate sacrifice. And what he did on the cross basically said, I'm taking the punishment for sin. I'm taking the punishment for you doing it your own way and knowing better than God. <laughs> He's the only one that could possibly do this because he didn't sin. I was tempted, but he never gave way. He was the only acceptable ultimate sacrifice that God said yes to. <sighs> It really is amazing grace, unfailing love, that he would consider us worth dying for. Come on, folks, you know, sometimes we don't consider us worth anything, do we? You know, we have a, a job sometimes to accept that who we are and the way that we are. But God loves us so much. So what did Jesus come to save us from? Well, from ourselves, probably, yes. But he simply came to restore that broken relationship of mankind with God himself mm -hmm. and to save us from God's wrath against sin. You know, we avoid talking about the wrath of God. We avoid talking about judgment and sin because they make us quite uncomfortable. But the truth is, we don't need to look very far we can even just look into the mirror. 
look into society and see the mess that mankind and we are in. And it's pretty much because mankind wants to do it their own way. The way I think is best. The way you think is best. And so your way and my way may be different. People's ideas of wrong and right are different. And that's a problem, isn't it? It causes grief. It causes pain, riots, wars, death, misery. And that's just between two people. Let alone what happens worldwide and throughout the ages. And, you know, whether we believe it or not, one day this world will end and God will be seen for who he really is. Almighty Father, Judge and Saviour. You see, God is pure and he's holy and he's absolutely righteous and God absolutely loves us beyond what we can fully comprehend. And he gives us life and a choice to love him and serve him to walk with him and know him or not and when we walk in our own way and, and even maybe think the bible's great and accept that but we we try to make the bible fit into our way of life it's such small thinking and we miss what god has really designed for us even in the early days of mankind, when man went his own way, God wanted mankind to see the awful seriousness of living without him. And he planned a legal and right way to bridge that chasm, defeating the works of Satan and the enemy of our souls. Some people ask, well, why doesn't God just stop Satan? You see, Satan is God's enemy. And because you and me are made in the image and likeness of God, we remind him of God. You remind the devil of God, which is why he comes against you because you're made in his image and he, he doesn't care. He doesn't care who he attacks or how he attacks. He doesn't care about the consequences. If he can get to God's kids, well, that's painful. But Jesus defeated the devil and one day it'll all be wrapped up and there will be the new kingdom. It's a bit like a criminal standing in the a dock before the judge and uh, you know how it goes. How do you plead? And the criminal has to say, I'm guilty as charged. But because righteousness and justness demand a punishment for a crime committed, then ne and there needs to be a consequence for wrongdoing. We get this picture that the judge's son say, excuse me, I'll take his punishment. This son who's never committed a crime says, I'll, I'll take his punishment. And the judge says, okay, accepted. I'll accept you in place of this guy. And the prisoner goes free and the son takes the punishment. Now it's up to the criminal to choose whether he's gonna accept that and live in that grace and pardon or not. Now who wouldn't choose to live. He, he, he could say, well, um, no thanks. I'll, I'll take the consequences. I'll take imprisonment for life, living in guilt and fear and shame. And then the death sentence, which isn't a bullet in the head. It's long and drawn out and eternal. Who would do that? Who would say no to the offer of life? Furthermore, the judge pronounces that 
anybody, if they believe this son and his son's offer and choose to accept, they can go free too. And that's, that's what we can choose too. We can accept that we can't make it right with God by keeping rules and regulations because we just never, just think about it. How many times do we mess up, think it wrong, get angry at somebody and just blow it? We can't make it by doing as many good deeds to try and make it right. We can never ever match up to our creator and his amazing holiness. But we can accept the sacrifice Jesus made for us and give our lives to him in grateful honour and love and walk with him. Mm. Or we can say, no, thanks, I'll take eternal separation from God and his loving ways. And I'll side with the devil and all the hatred and the ugliness. Look at the hatred. Look at the ugliness. Look at the bitterness and the, the, the horrible side of the world. And think of that for eternity. Who would choose that? Who wouldn't accept the offer of life, freedom, eternal life with the amazing creator, the giver of forgiveness, grace, mercy, and love? And yet mankind does refuse it. We justify our acts. We blame God when it doesn't go my way. We blame other people, we blame systems, we blame the past, we blame anybody. <laughs> and then some of us decide, oh, well, I'll just have a word with the big man when I get there, you know. As if he were just another persuadable guy and we think we can get away with it. Yeah, come on, how dare we compare ourselves and set ourselves up as equal with God. It's, it's shocking when you think about it. And it, it also makes the sacrifice of Jesus worthless when we cheapen it that way. You know, Jesus didn't come to condemn anybody. Many times Christianity has a bad image as they're so judgmental, but that's not what the message is about. John 3, verse 16 to 19 says, for here is the way God loved the world. He gave his only unique son as a gift. So now everyone, everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but to be its savior and rescue it. He came to save lives. So now there's no longer any condemnation for those who believe in him. But the unbeliever already lives under condemnation because they don't believe in the name of the only son of God. And here's the basis for their judgment. The light of God has now come into the world, but people love darkness more than the light because they want the darkness to conceal their evil. Yeah, it's not just the amazing fact that Jesus died to make a way back to God, but he rose from the dead. Because whereas death legally could claim its hold on sinful people, Jesus defeated death and came back to walk with us, to impart his spirit, his Holy Spirit, to guide us, to teach us, to lead us, strengthen us and give us life in all its fullness. You know, when someone dies, their estate is given to their sons and daughters because it's been bequeathed to them that on their death, they would inherit whatever fortune they had. When Jesus died, he left us his fortune, the riches of the kingdom of heaven, grace, joy, yes. love, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. There's no law against those. And then he came back to life 
to manage his kingdom, if you like, to manage his affairs in giving us that forgiveness, in giving us that grace yeah. and that mercy. So can anybody receive that? Yeah. John 1, verse 10 to 14 says this. He came into the very world he created. The world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. And by being children of God, inheritors of his kingdom. Goes on to say they're reborn. They're new people, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human, made his home among us, and he is full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And that's the gospel. That's the truth. It's the message of Easter that Jesus came into the world to save lives, yours, mine, for eternity, and to anyone who would believe. He didn't come to judge you and condemn you, but to give us life and the right to be his children, heirs of his promises. It's not, it's not based on your good behavior. No. It's not based on how well you've kept the law. No. It's based on putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who loves us and gave himself for us. So the Easter challenge to us all today is, what are you going to do with the Savior? You can be like Pilate, wash your hands of him. Peter, deny him. No, 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 don't know him, not having anything to do with him. Just ignore him. Hope he'll go away. Or are you going to believe him and believe his word? It's your choice. I know what I've chosen. How about you? Shall we pray? Lord God, we thank you so much that Jesus was willing to come because of love for us, for me. Lord, I thank you that you did that. I thank you that you hung on that cross in such pain and agony and that even your father abandoned you because of the sin that was weighed, laid upon you. Lord, I thank you that you did that for me. Lord, I want to live for you. I want to live in the power of your love and your strength and your forgiveness. I want to live eternally with you. And so this morning, on Resurrection Sunday, I ask you to come into my life, to fill me with your resurrection power. I thank you for the forgiveness, for your grace over me and your mercy. And I thank you that I'm yours. I believe and I'm a child of God. And I thank you for all the entitlement that God gives me to be a child of God, an heir of all the promises of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Holy Spirit, teach me more about his lovely name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Thank Alan. That's great. I really appreciate Challenging. that. Sorry? Challenging? Yes, yes. <laughs> I really appreciate it, sort of looking at that again. I think even if you've been a Christian for a, a long time, mm -hmm. it's important to remember mm -hmm. that why Jesus came. And it was to says um, in, that, in that verse you shared in Timothy that he came to save sinners. And I think a lot of people, um, 
think of, you know, you got to be perfect to be a Christian, and you got to be, you know, good enough to be to to be a churchgoer, and that's not why Jesus came. He came for the people who were sinners. He came for the people who were messed up, the, uh, and the un, the unrighteous, the the people who do, aren't doing any anything good with their lives. You know, that's who God loves. You know, He loves all of us at whatever stage you're at, and and everything. And I think that's just really good to know that you're not called to perfection. You're called to accept the grace and the mercy um, that uh, mm -hmm. he gave to us. Mm -hmm. I think too, what struck me, uh, Pastor Helen, thanks so much for that and sharing your heart. I know it was strong on you, which was so important because it's actually similar to what, on the vein of what you preached the last time about choose this day whom will serve, really. Um, and what an opportunity, well, not, not what an opportune time at Easter, but I think what struck me too is and all I could think is, let's not miss the Jesus that walks beside us. Mm -hmm. And I really, I know I've shared a silly story to do with offering a couple of weeks ago, um, but it really struck me that I've got balancing shopping and I missed the wee guy saying, oh, can I help you? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. And how many times are we sitting in church just now? We're sitting in your home and we're like, I'm fine. But are you? I wasn't. Stuff was falling off. I had to catch the cereal and I told you my foot was on them. And, um, and it just struck me that we just miss that same Jesus in everyday life. And um, we had a wee miracle recently just with a car and Duke wasn't going to come on together because he had to look for a van quickly because, you know, our car died. And while we're studying Romans, Duke had his miracle there where it's the most unexpected place to have somebody offer you a car. He's meant to be on eBay. He's meant to be on doing free sales and wants. And there we are in the book of Romans, chapter 13 with Pastor Mark. And then this lady just said, oh, I have a car. I've got a van you can use. There's no hurry. And we're like, isn't that God? And we could have missed it. And Duke admits he nearly never came on. He needed, we needed it. It was important. And there's time for not going on. So please hear me right. But but it was there that we had our miracle. And yesterday we were getting rid of old bikes that were rusty. And then this one guy just said, oh, I'll take all that stuff to the dump for you. And I was like, that's God. That is God. You, it, you might think, oh, that's a coincidence. No, it is so not. It's God. So let's not miss um, what he's doing. And then finally, I think, like you said at the end, Pastor Helen, it's we need to let them into every area. I'm on a complete house blitz at the minute. I don't think there's nothing left in my house not unturned. You should see the piles of bin liners out by our... I don't even want to look because I'm just afraid of what's been thrown away. So I've decided I'm not going to look. <laughs> don't look. My neighbour my neighbor, my neighbor who lives quite far away even said, what have, you, what have you been getting rid of? I said, everything. There was grace for lockdown, grace for us all at home, but that ceased on Monday. And then I was finding pots, pots of gloss and everything and thinking, oh, let's gloss today. Anyway, my point is that every area has been touched by me and my hoover and my pot of gloss where it was appropriate. And what areas of your lives or our lives are we leaving hidden, do you know? And this morning, lay it bare. I let my house bare and I phoned my mum and I said, today would be a really good time to visit. <laughs> is today a good time for God to visit you? Or do you need to sort something first? Have a ponder. Yesterday was a really good day for anybody to visit my house. Sadly, if you've missed it, which everybody has, because you're not allowed in. But yesterday, it was clean, perfect, dust-free, everything. We're not to live perfect lives, but we have to give all of our life to God. Don't leave things hidden. We talked earlier about forgiveness. We talked about pain. We talked about things that you're struggling with. Don't do it alone. So my two things were don't miss the Jesus that walks with you every minute. And two, let him into every single area. So Helen was praying there earlier at the end of her sermon just about, you know, giving your life to God. And, and if that's you, if you've never, what we call, getting, got been saved before, then, you know, th this is, why not today? You know, there's no yeah. reason why not. The Bible is very simple. Um, you know, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. So it's just about believing and telling someone about it. And we would love for you, if you're here in church today, or if you're watching online, to tell us about it. If that's you today, if that you, you, you agreed in a, that prayer of Helen in, in agreement, and you, you want to be con ready, confessed, yes, I'm a Christian, I'm saved now, then that'd be great. So we'd also like to give you one of these, these books um, written by Nikki Gumbel. It says, Why Jesus? Just to get you started on your journey with Jesus and understanding what it means to be a Christian. Or if you're just curious, you're not ready to make that 
step just yet, and you want, but you still kind of want to know more. It's really simple. As you can see, it's very thin, mm -hmm. so it doesn't take a lot of heavy reading. Um, and Nikki's a great, great one for communicating the simplicity of the gospel of what Helen shared with us this morning. So we'd love to give you one of those. So just contact us if you want, or if you're here today, just say, can I get one of those? And we'll give you one to take away today. Okay, right. Well, I think we're going to worship. Um, sorry? You can pray. But we want to be, do this together, so don't be stuck. And if you're in the building today and you need prayer, you need an arm alongside, don't be stuck today. Let's be free. Let's be free together. We want to rejoice with you. We want to pray with you. And can we just pray again? Is that okay? Um, Duke was just about to say it is leading into uh, Graves into Gardens, which we'll go straight into. And you might be living in despair or loss or whatever, um, but God wants to turn it into a beautiful garden. It's not cheesy lyrics. It's the power of the gospel that Helen has just taught us. So, Father, I just thank you for every ear that's hearing this uh, word this morning or tonight or whenever you're hearing it. And that, Father, I thank you that there's freedom in our amazing Christ. And, Lord, we just want to make that way for people. We want to help people through. And if that's you this morning, we thank you that, that, Father, that your heart's open, ready to receive. And, Lord, I pray that you would find the courage that God will give you um, to call, to connect, um, so that we can do this together. So, Father, we just pray for every listening ear that your peace and joy and freedom would fill them this Easter morning, that they, too, would get out of their tomb, and that, Father, that we would walk out together and not only that, but we would recognize you in every step that we walk and that there would be no area in our lives that's tripping us up continually that, Father, we can just expose our hearts and our lives to you in Jesus' name. Thankful for your healing, your loving, your forgiveness um, and your freedom. And Jesus, we just thank you for what you sacrificed at the cross for us that we can rejoice today in Jesus' name. And everyone in the church and at home and anywhere said, Amen. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you that we can turn graves into gardens through him. Let's worship together. Hey, church, let's just take to heart everything that we just heard this morning. And as we continue to celebrate Easter, we're celebrating Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. And that was to set a precedent for, for uh, and to make a picture for our lives that is to take us from a place of death to a place of life. And we're going to sing this next song called Graves into Gardens. And if you don't know Jesus, this is a great opportunity to try and understand what it means to be saved. And, and, and it's really about God changing us from a place of despair, a place of hurt, and to a place of a beautiful garden, a beautiful place of joy and freedom. So this is Graves into Gardens.
Hallelujah. Amen. He turns graves into gardens. Amen. Thank you. This is the God we serve. This Amen. is God we believe in. What a wonderful service it's been, hasn't it? Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> I really, really hope that you guys have enjoyed being connected with us. This is, this is new to us. We're, we're, we're going to navigate this thing. We're going to get good at this the more we do it. You know, the hybrid church, real life church, we're all real. We're all family. This is amazing. <laughs> we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. We just need to, <laughs> just to stay part. I reckon just stay positive, you know, and, and, and consider all the things that Pastor Helen was talking to us about, the gospel of Jesus Christ that needs to be in our heart, in our brains. Because yes. we live our lives from Easter. We live from Easter. You know, these guys, those guys in that story, they were looking forward to Easter. Now we live on the aftermath. Mm -hmm. We need to remember these things and, and let it change the way we live. Yes. Um, do you have something to say? Oh. You did good. You did good. You Sorry, said it all. Excited. Uh, we have some reminders. Yes. Oh yeah, that's what we're meant to be doing. Uh, just remind you, <laughs> this week there's a few things coming up. So we have youth on Friday mm -hmm. um, from kids. seven till eight. Yeah, before that, from six till seven, we have kids online on Friday as well. Um, and, and that's also amazing. We also have together on Wednesday. Sorry, that's mm -hmm. the wrong order. Wednesday, we have Bible. together, and, and that's an online um, Bible study opportunity for us to just hang mm -hmm. out. You know, if you're available from 7 o'clock on Wednesday, are we in Romans? Yes, 14. Romans 14, 14 this, this Wednesday. So, yeah, connect, because it's good stuff, man. Um, what and else? we also have our prayer meeting tonight on our and the River of Life um, WhatsApp from... Six till seven. There you go. I think that's everything. Cool. Awesome. That's us. Yes. So until next, um, next time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Happy Easter. Bye. Happy Easter. <laughs>The setter was too broken. The set had too many scars. In the morning when my heart is cold, you're the heat for my weary soul. You're the good in all I know. to be When my bones are tired You're my strength and my heart's desire You're the light when the sun expires I remember how far I've come I'm not lost with you, I'm home I didn't find you on my own You're the song, you're the song Rising from my heart Everything comes alive
People said I was too broken. But God said something different. He said he'd take me with my bruises and my scars. He never said life would be easy. It can still be tough. But I know this. I've got hope.